Good afternoon. This is 25 Toten. I couldn't find any information on downloading Seven Days to Die for free. So I did a little research and tested a couple methods. And I got a working client here. So all I need to do is download the torrent from this website. I'm going to have this linked in the video description below. You just download the torrent. If you don't have a torrent uh, program, you can use BitTorrent or uTorrent. I'll have a link to both below. I imagine if you're looking at this video, you probably already have one though. I'll, I'll include that of course. And then you're gonna need WinRAR to unrock the files as well. If you don't have WinRAR already, I'll provide this link below in the video description. When this is finished downloading, I mean, you just save it onto here, of course, save it wherever the hell you want, and then open up the containing folder. You're gonna wanna select all of these raw files, right click, then hit extract here. And when it's finished extracting, this folder is gonna come up and from here, you're gonna have two things. The seven days to die launcher, and then the start dedicated.bat. This is what you need to start your server. You can edit the options for your server in the server config file. You're gonna to have to open it with notepad or notepad plus plus. I'd recommend using that. Here you can change your settings. Uh, for the server. The port, you don't want to mess with this file, this number. You just want to keep it at 26900. We're going to use this to port forward your server shortly. So what we'll do is I'll show you how to port forward if you don't know how to do that. I'll just throw it in here and conclude it. It's very simple. You have to look up your, your router. Um, Look up, look up the name of your router. If you don't know what the name of your router is, there should be a sticker on the side of it, on the physical router itself. Type the name of that in there, and you're gonna find the IP code you need to access it onto your uh, browser. For mine, I have an Eris. And in particular, I got this model. So when you Google Eris in this, it's a Google, it's gonna come up with this number as uh, the IP to connect to your router. Very simple. As well, you're most likely gonna find a default login information for this. A lot of times it's admin admin or admin slash root or admin slash password. Those are very common logins that almost every single router uses. Yours may be different from mine. Just look up online what the default login is. You can change your password later if you'd like. Every setting is gonna be different in your router, but for the most part, there's gonna be one of these, one of your tabs is gonna have the option for port forwarding. It might be under game or whatever. It just varies for each, but it's all the same thing. Click on port forwarding you're gonna create IPv4. Um, yours, your router probably won't look just like this. It might have you know, a box here, and it might just have some empty fields. Um, it should look pretty similar. You should know what to do though, just by seeing me do this. You're gonna create your IPv4. Um, again, that button might not exist for you. It might already just look like this or something. To find your IPv4, go down to your network at the bottom right, right click and open a network and sharing center. You can click on the connection type ethernet and in details, and you'll see your IPv4 number is listed here. You take this number and copy paste it onto here. So for fun, I'll just do this again. I'm just gonna copy it right here. 
you need the port to be the same number we looked at earlier. It's going to be 26900. And some other guys recommend doing up to 02. Um, so you can see other servers online. So just go ahead and do that. Make those your two field integer numbers. Then the description can be, you know, whatever. I already did this, so. Um, change your protocol. You should have a protocol type. Sometimes um, you won't have the option to do both. If that's the case, I believe UDP is the correct one. Um, just to be safe, you can make you can make this and do it twice, one for TCP, one for UDP. If you have the option to make both, just click that. And of course you want to enable it. When that's done, that's gonna allow other people to connect to your server. That's all you have to do to port forward. Just um, save your settings at the bottom and then um, exit out, of course. Once you get your server configuration the way you want it to be, the settings are pretty simple in there. Click Start Dedicated. You, just, you don't have to wait for this, you can just press a button. Server running in background. This means that the server is running, and then press another key to continue. The command prompt will exit. Now to make sure that it is running, open up your command, your uh, task manager. All you have to do is just see if this is running, seven days to die is running. This is your server. There is no command for it. Again, it will close. This is normal. This is correct. And then we're going to launch the game. Now, all you have to do is connect to a server. The IP you need to put in is your local IP. All you gotta do is go on Google, type in local IP. Or what is my what is my IP actually? This is your public IP address. You give this number to other people to connect to your server. This is really louder. So you give that number to people, keep the port the same, and then connect. If your friend is just trying to join your server, all they have to do is run the game and click join server with the IP. Everything I just told you to do is if you're going to port forward and host the server yourself and don't feel like using Kamachi. The poor, poor forwarding is very simple. Um, this is for the 16.2 client, I believe. As of right now, it is one version uh, late. There is 16.3 is out right now, but there isn't a working client I could find for 16.3. So this will do for now. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comment. I haven't had any issues running this yet. Sometimes it might crash upon closing. Um, that's about it. Just use the task manager to uh, get rid of it. That's about it though. If you have any questions, uh, leave them below. I am pretty active on YouTube, so I'll be happy to answer them. And I uh, wish you well.